And I'll also post I'll also, also post the PowerPoint as a separate thing. Uh, so it's just a PDF, uh, just an Adobe document. So you can go through those individual slides if you, if you uh, want to go through those without, <clears throat> without having to refer back to this, this uh, video. <clears throat> okay, body regions. There are regional terms. So we have directional terms, and um, we also have regional terms. So these are uh, smaller, these are to refer to smaller regions of the body. And so you can communicate where something is, uh, what, what area of the body you're referring to. I've already used a couple of these, talking about the cranial region or the cervical region. Um, the key to memorizing all those, there's, there's a bunch of them, so don't get freaked out, but uh, there's the, um, just if you repeat these to yourself, they start becoming second nature. It's not that hard once you get to, uh, once you, if you practice them. If you try to cram two hours before the test, you're gonna have a tough time, so. Um, so the head, you have the skull and the face. The neck connects the head to the trunk. The trunk is uh, the chest down to the diaphragm, okay, which goes up and down to help you breathe, to make you breathe. You have the abdom abdomen or ab uh, abdominal area, the back um, and the pelvis. Then you have the upper limbs, the shoulder, the arm, the forearm and hand, and the lower limb, the buttocks, groin, thigh, leg, and foot. So we're gonna talk about all. So those are the basic things. So you go, oh, that's pretty easy. I got the, got the skull, I got the face. Well, there's a whole lot more terms that describe sub-regions of those. So we're going to start uh, show those next. Next slide. So and here they are in one figure in your book. So I'm not going to go over this figure because it's too small to see, really. So I'm going to break this figure into smaller pieces so you can see it on the screen in, in, in lab as well as uh, here on in the PowerPoint too. So here we are. Um, we have all these different regions, and some of these are going to be covered up, unfortunately. Um, I'll point those out when we get there. So, so we have the cephalic region. Okay, that's the head. And the occipital region is the back of the head. Cervical region is the neck. We have dorsal, which is the whole back. Okay, vertebral is where the spinal cord is and the vertebrae. Lumbar region is the lower part of the back down here. Okay, sacral region is where the sacrum is. That's this region here. Gluteal region is the buttocks. You have the uh, popliteal region is the back side of the knee. The sural region is your calf. And we have underneath on the bottom part here is the plantar. P-L-A-N-T-A-R region. That's the bottom of the foot. The foot is referred to the pedal or the pedal region. The leg is the, the leg is not the whole thing from from here all the way down. Okay, that's not the whole the leg. The leg is just this part right here. Okay, it's the, what we refer to as the lower leg, encompassing the calves and the, and the shin part. Okay, the thigh is the upper leg there. And then we have the manual. I'll start back up at the top. So we have the arm is the upper part. Then we have the forearm, which is the lower part. And we have the manual region, which is the hand, okay? And the arm is referred to as, as the brachial region. And the forearm is the anti-brachial region, okay? Then we have the thoracic region, which is the whole chest. The sternal region, which is the sternum, the breastbone right there. Abdominal region there, the pelvic region. And then we also have the manual region again here. The inguinal region, I don't really like this drawing. The inguinal region is really this and this region. There's ligament there and all that, so it's not just this section right in the center here. Then we have the pubic region. Then we have the uh, pedal region again. We have the upper limb, okay? And so, um, and then the palmar region and the lower limb, right? So there's the, uh, the various regions, and we break these down into... Um, some of these common terms and some of these terms that you might not have heard before, like brachial and antibrachial region. All right, next slide. So we're going to break this, uh, these uh, upper limb and lower limb down into uh, more terms. So the cephalic region, so this is cephalic region. Okay, so the cranial region, so that's actually the top of the head here. The frontal region is the forehead. So if you ever played soccer, you're going to head the ball. It comes off the frontal region. That's actually called the frontal bone right there. We have the ocular region. Okay. It's also referred to as the orbital region. 
So that's the orbital or ocular region. We have the otic region, which is the ear, the buccal region, that's the cheek, oral region is the mouth, or the nasal region is the nose, and the mental region is the chin. Okay. Then for the uh, upper limb, we have the acromial region, that's your shoulder, right? Then we have the axillary region, that's the underarm, under there, brachial region, antibrach antibrachial, and the uh, inside of the elbow, right there, okay? It's called the antecubital region. We have the carpal region, this is the wrist there. Then we have the metacarpals, which is this part of your hand, sorry, is this, this part of your hand right here, okay? And then we have the digital region, which is all the fingers, and the thumb has its own special name. It's called the pollux. Then we look at the lower limb. We have the coxal region. That's the hip. Femoral region is the thigh. The femur is in there, that bone. Uh, patellar region, that's the kneecap. Crural region is the front of the lower of the, the, the leg, the lower part of, this, of the, the lower limb. And the back part is called the sural region. The calf part is sural, so the front part is the crural. And let's see, we have tarsal region. That's the ankle, ankle bones. Metatarsals. So you notice that we have carpals and metacarpals. So we have tars, we have carpals and metacarpals. So we have tarsals and metatarsals. Then we have the digital region. That's the um, all of the the toes. So I'm using my hand as if it's a foot. Uh, the toes. And then the big toe is called the hallux. Okay. And I think that's all of them on there. Yep. So that's the anterior view of, of the body of the uh, lower limb, upper limb, and head. All right, next slide. Oh, yeah. So here's another term. So above knee and then below knee. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> I always love that joke. <laughs> next slide. Okay, so here's some uh, anatomical terms. This is actually out of your old book. Um, uh, it gives all of the terms all in a single uh, table for you. This will be in the PowerPoint. Um, so we have um, axial and appendicular. Okay, so axial referring to the uh, center part of the body, so the tr head and trunk. So the phallic region, cervical region, which is the neck. Okay. And I didn't uh, point that out. Um, and you you might wonder about cervical region. You go, well, cervical region. And so if you've heard of the cervix, uh, that's the neck of the uterus. So that's the neck. That's why it's called the cervix. And let's see, thoracic region, abdominal region, pelvic region, dorsal region. So all these um, uh, all these regions, these subregions that are in the cephalic region, you have cranial, facial, frontal, orbital, ot otic, or ocular. Your book calls it ocular. The old book calls it orbital. Either of those terms is fine. Um, nasal, buccal, oral, mental, occipital, the back of the head. Then thoracic, you have sternal, so that's the breastbone. Pectoral, that's the chest here, and the mammary region. And then we have abdominal, you have umbilical region, so your belly button. And then coxal is the hips. The pelvic, you have the pubic region. Dorsal. So on your backside, you have scapular region. That's with shoulder blades on the backside. You can feel those. And then you have the ver vertebral region, your vertebrae, and the lumbar region, the lower back, just above the hip bones and the, low, the lower back. Then the appendicular region, that's your uh, upper and lower limbs. So you have your upper limb or appendage. So appendage, uh, if you think of appendix, something hanging off of something else, uh, or the appendix of the book, that's the last like little part that's hanging off the end of the book. So we have the acromial region, which is shoulder, the axillary region, the underarm, brachial region, the upper arm, antecubital region is the front part of the elbow, so here. And the back part of the of the elbow is the olecranon, that's the olecranol region, region. Okay. Antebrachial, so there's the forearm, okay? And then we have the carpal region, which is the wrist, manual region is the hand, palmar region is the palm. Okay, digital region is the digits, and that includes all, all five, okay? Just the thumb has a special name for it, the pollux, and the big toe has its special name, the hallux. So lower limb appendage, uh, we have the inguinal region. It's pertaining to the groin and where the thigh attaches to the pelvis, so that's why I drew those lines across there, because it actually is a little bit 
longer than what they show in the book. I don't really like that picture in the book. Um, the gluteal region is your buttocks. The uh, femoral region, and we'll talk. And when you talk about muscles in AP2, you'll talk about the like the gluteus maximus. Uh, so that's the gluteal region. The femoral region is the thigh. Patellar region is the knee. Popliteal is the back side of the knee. Posterior side of the knee. Crural is the anterior surface of the, of the leg. Fibular is the lateral side of the leg. So that's the fibula is the bone that's on the lateral side of the leg. So it's on. So if you're if that was your leg, it would be on the outside out there. And sural region is the calf, the back side of your of your lo, of your leg, which is the lower portion of the lower limb. Tarsal region is the ankle. Pedal region is the foot. Plantar region is the bottom of the foot. Calcaneal is the ankle. Or the really the heel, sorry, the heel. It's not the ankle, it's the heel. Tarsal region is the ankle, calcaneal is the heel, and digital region is the is the toes, including four toes plus the hallux. Okay, next slide. So here we go. Here's a um, uh, activity. You can label the regional terms uh, on on the handout uh, that, that you've got. And so you can see all these different terms. I'm not going to go through them again because we'll get to to uh, uh, go through them in the when you're labeling labeling them yourself. One thing I wanted to point out is there's the back of the hand that's referred for, referred to as the, as the dorsum, and the top of the foot is also referred to referred to as the dorsum. So you won't have to know know this for the test, but it's something that's you know you might see that and throw throw you off a little bit. Just realize that in the anatomical position, the back of the hand is the dorsum. And the top of the foot is also referred to as the, as the dorsum. Okay, I think that's the only things I need to point on in here. All right, uh, next slide. Well, no, hold on one sec. Um, the digital region is also referred to as the phalangeal region because those fingers they have these are uh, the bones in there are called each is, each one's called a phalanx and they're called phalanges altogether. And I think that's all it. And they're also called phalanges in the foot. So the foot and the hand both have phalanges. So confused yet? <laughs> a lot of terms. I know, I know. So just take it slow. That's why I said just take it slow and you learn a few at a time and then test yourself. Learn a few more. Go back and retest yourself on the earlier ones. Break it up in pieces. Learn a few. Then move forward. Go back and test yourself. It really helps it. And you'll realize, oh, I don't know this. And try to teach this to other people too. Like, uh, you know, if you have a little brother, or little sister, or husband, or wife, or um, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, or just a friend who's willing to listen to you, just, you know, say, I need you to practice. And, uh, or, you know, if you can get study groups, that helps too. All right, next slide. Here's just another slide showing the, the same things. Um, and I don't think there's any differences on here. Um, no, they're all... What the only slide that, what this slide shows is more the noun firm uh, noun form of the words. There is what we use like uh, when I talk about the the break say the cervical region okay the neck. Well, it's actually the cervical region. Um, there's other terms that you can use for these like uh, let me look at cephal cephalic region. This is a better one a better example. So cephalic region, the head is actually called the cephalon. Okay. So we have the cephalic region, that's the adjective, or the cephalon is the noun. And you have, so you have various things like that. The olecranon is the elbow, okay, the back of the elbow. The, it's the olecranol region. So you have the popliteus is the back of the knee. It's the popliteal region. Popliteal is um, modifying region, so it's the adjective. And... Um, like the, the plantar region is the planta, the sole of the foot. It's called the plantar region. All right, next slide. So why do we need to know these, these names? Well, uh, if you learn these now, it makes learning the muscles a lot easier, okay? So here's, here's the region. Uh, this gives some examples out of the book, uh, this activity one. So here's the rectus abdominis muscles. That's your six-pack abs there, okay? So, uh, abdominus, right there, so that tells you it's in the abdominal region. All right, rectus, all you got to do is remember that means straight muscle. So, here you go. You have these, you have your six-pack abs, 
and their abs because it's in the abdominal region. The brachialis muscle, okay, well, that's in the brachial region. And you know the brachial region is your upper arm up here. So there's your brachialis muscle right there. Okay, so it's in the brachial region. All right, and this is the, so we have the biceps brachii. Okay, that's a, everybody calls it the biceps, right? The arm, the muscle that pull your, your arm up. But it's actually called, there's two heads on it, so it's bi, meaning two, seps, meaning heads, and brachii, it's in the brachial region. So, so, it tells, so a lot of these things tell you where they are just by their, um, their name. <clears throat> So, so if you, if you learn these regions, you'll it'll be easier to learn the muscles later on. Next slide. Here's the biceps femoris. Well, that's a two-headed muscle. We talk about bi meaning two, seps meaning head. Femoris is in the femur region. So that's the femoral region. So here's the biceps femoris head. Here, here's here's one head. Here's another head of the of the muscle. Okay, and they come they come down, and they meet down here and attach to the fibula down here. All right, so biceps femoris tells you where the muscle is. Next slide. Epicranius muscle, okay? So cranius, you can guess that means cranial, so it means head, epi meaning around, and the mentalis muscle, here's the mentalis muscle. Where, where would the mentalis muscle be? That would be in the chin, in the mental region, right? Okay. So, so it makes it makes it easier to understand where some of these uh, these muscles are if you start learning all these words. All right, next slide. So here's another uh, view of the epicranius and mentalis muscles. We have the epicranius muscle up here, and the mentalis muscle here. So the mentalis on the chin region, the epicranius, uh, the frontal belly. So the frontal region, the cranial region up there. Uh, also have the buccinator, uh, which is the goes to the buccal region, the cheek there. All right. So there's just some more examples of, if you know these regions, you can start learning these, uh, these things. Like the orbicularis oculi, so the uh, orbital region. All right, an ocular or ocular region. All right, next slide. Here's one other one, the gluteus maximus muscles, the gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, biceps femoris. So the biceps femoris in the um, uh, femoral region, the gluteus maximus, and medius in the glute gluteal region. So there you go. So it's easy to, easier to remember these muscles when you know where these regions already are. Next slide. Here's the figures that are in the handout. Uh, and the handout will have a couple pages of, of a list of body regions for you to color in. If you don't have the exact color, not a big deal. You can use a different color. We'll do this in lab. Um, but you, if you didn't make it to lab, you'll, you can do it on your own time. And uh, color these things in and take a look at them and see. Uh, and this will give you good practice. Draw your own pictures, color things in. If you want to buy an anatomical coloring book, you can. Um, I think it works just as well just to draw crude diagrams and color them in, label them yourselves. Um, okay, the next two slides will have the answers to, uh, to these uh, on them. And um, if you want to look at the PowerPoint, you can also look at the PowerPoint. Okay, next slide. So here's the answers to the uh, anterior uh, portion. Next slide. And the anterior, the uh, answers to the um, the cephalic region as well as the posterior uh, portion. All right. Next slide. Okay, we're going to go on to body cavities and membranes. So the dorsal body cavity and the ventral body cavity. So we talk about dorsal ventral or anterior posterior. Well, I should say um, posterior anterior. Um, is the uh, would match up with dorsal and ventral. So this would be dorsal would be posterior and ventral is anterior. Okay, but we refer to these as dorsal body cavity and ventral body cavity. Um, the dorsal body cavity consists of the cranial and vertebral cavities. The ventral body cavity contains the thoracic and uh, abdominal pelvic cavities. Ventral body cavities also contain something called serous membranes, and we're going to talk about what a serous membrane is uh, as we go on. Okay, so this is the thoracic cavity here, and this is the diagram, the, sorry, the diagram, the diaphragm, and this is the abdominal cavity here, abdominal cavity. 
All right, so next slide. So this shows you the cranial cavity. So the dorsal body cavity is on this side. Here's the cranial cavity. Here's the spinal cavity or the uh, vertebral cavity. Um, um, and then we have the ventral cavity here. So we have thoracic cavity, we have diaphragm separating the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And this is, uh, this is the pelvic cavity here. So it's, you have pelvic, pelvic, abdominal, abdominal cavities. So this is often referred to as the abdomino-pelvic cavity because there is no actual dividing line here. It's an imaginary line that uh, goes across your, uh, basically from your, your hip bones, uh, the hip bones here, and it goes down uh, to the pelvic bone. So it kind of, uh, it, in that region, it gives you the pelvic region below that, and above that is the abdominal, re abdominal region. So the whole region, again, is called the abdominal pelvic cavity. There is a, a very strong division between the thoracic and the uh, abdominal cavity or abdominal pelvic cavity, which is the diaphragm is there. So I should label that diaphragm. Okay, so next slide. So here's the figure out of your guys' book. I thought the that previous one was a little bit better and uh, this one had just more stuff on it. So I wanted to give you an introduction to it before I showed you the one out of your book. So here's the cranial cavity and the spinal cavity or vertebral cavity there, as you can see, and they've they put all these different colors. So this would be the thoracic cavity. And this is the abdominal. Ab, it's a D, abdominal. And this is the pelvic. So those two together, so that, and that together are the abdominopelvic cavity. All right. Then, uh, if we look at looking from the front, uh, so looking uh, at the anterior, uh, anteriorly at the person, we have the thoracic cavities here. So this thoracic cavity. We have the diaphragm in between. Then we have the abdominopelvic cavity here there and then we have so this is divided into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity right and we have like the top of the hip bones here so extending down to here there's an imaginary line that goes across across you can kind of you can kind of imagine it yourself and figure out where the pelvic cavity is um, then we have the uh, there's a couple other things we want to point out here we have a region called there's a big if you can hear that, there's a huge thunderstorm going on outside with thunder in the background. Um, there, there's a region in the middle between the lungs. There's uh, where the heart is and blood vessels, esophagus, trachea, that kind of stuff. Um, it's called the mediastinum, okay? And it's this, um, you can think of it as kind of a, a box, okay? So it's like here, you know, here and here on, on you. It's the mediastinum, and it's the area that's between, the, essentially the area that's between the lungs. It's not actually a box because the lungs squish in around it, so it's irregularly shaped. But think, think of it, initially think of it as, a, as just a, this rectangular box that's inside you. That's the mediastinum. It connects the heart and blood, major blood vessels, <clears throat> as well as the uh, trachea and esophagus, uh, or lower portion of the esophagus, that kind of stuff. So, All right. The lungs are actually divided into their own cavities. Uh, we have the, the right pleural cavity and the left pleural cavity. And the pleura is a lining that's around the lungs. So if you've ever heard of lining of the lungs, maybe you've heard of like lining of the lungs got inflamed. Uh, someone maybe, maybe you've heard of pleurisy, which is P-L-E-U-R, or sometimes it might be spelled with I. So pleurisy, depends on which spelling you use. <clears throat> uh, pleurisy uh, is, would be an inflammation of lining of lungs. And you have a lining that goes around each lung. Okay. And so inside, uh, and we're going to talk about why, why this is, but inside that, uh, 
the lining of the lung is actually there's actually two layers and so inside that layer is called the cavity that's inside there right and then we have the pericardial cavity which is a membrane that's around the heart and in between the two layers of, of that membrane there's actually three layers but in between the layers there's a little cavity in there with some fluid in there uh, just like there is around the lungs <clears throat> and that uh, and that is called the pericardial cavity. So there's, there's some very those are very small, very thin cavities. Um, but anyway, so here's the these are the regions that that you'll need to know um, the mediastinum as um, the we'll talk about the the right and left pleural cavities and the pericardial cavity in more detail here in the next few slides. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so here's another slide just showing the cranial cavity vertebral canal or vertebral cavity, <clears throat> thoracic cavity, diaphragm, abdominal pelvic cavity, connecting the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity, right? So here's a little, and here's a uh, table <clears throat> defining all those, and defining the organs that are in each one of those cavities. And we're gonna uh, look at models in the lab, uh, some uh, torso models showing you all, all the um, um, uh, organs that are in each one of the, um, in each, in each one of these, uh, each of these regions. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so body cavities, <clears throat> the thoracic cavity, you have the pleural cavities surrounding the lungs, and then you have the mediastinum, that's the area between the pleural cavities, <clears throat> houses the serous membranes of the pericardial cavity, which contains the heart, All right? So, so anyway, here's the, um, so here's the, this is anterior, and this is posterior here. So the mediastinum is this region through kind of through here. All right. That's right. Whooped out along the front side there. So that's it really. So I'll stick that out. Okay. That doesn't really work, does it? Let me take let me take that out. Let me start over. Okay. So here's your mediastinum, here, 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 and across there. That makes it look a little better. Okay. So, all right, next slide. Abdominal pelvic cavity. You have the abdominal cavity, superior to the body pelvis, has the digestive, lymphatic, and urinary organs. Pelvic cavity has the reproductive organs as well as uh, some digestive and urinary organs. Abdominal pelvic cavity is mostly surrounded by a serous membrane called the peritoneum. So you might have heard of the peritoneum or um, some of you might have heard of someone having perit uh, perit uh, peritonitis. Um, it's uh, the inflammation of the, of the peritoneum. Some kidneys, uh, some organs, some kidneys, some organs are actually behind the peritoneum. They're called retroperitoneal, so on the back wall of the body back there. Some organs are subperitoneal, they're below uh, the peritoneum, or there, it's also referred to as infraperitoneal. So the urinary bladder would be one of those. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so dorsal body cavity contains the cranial, cranial cavity containing the brain and the vertebral canal containing the spinal cord. The ventral body cavity contains, oh, down here, contains the thoracic cavity, which has the pericardial cavity with the heart, pleural, ca pleural cavities, there's two of those with the lungs. Mediastinum having the heart, thymus, esophagus, trachea, blood vessels, bronchi. You have the diaphragm separates the thoracic and abdominal cavities. Abdominal pelvic cavity has the abdominal cavity, which has the stomach, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, small intestine, and kidneys. Appendix, part of large intestine. And the pelvic cavity contains part of large intestine, rectum, urinary bladder, reproductive organs, male, uh, both male and female. Uh, and the, notice that the penis and testes are located inferior to the pelvic cavity. They are actually external to the body. So, all right. Um, you're not going to have to know all of the organs that are in each one of these cavities specifically. I'm not going to ask you which organs are in the abdominal cavity. But you're just kind of going to just sort of learn that as we go along because you're going to see, well, here's the abdominal cavity, and so the stomach goes in there. The gallbladder goes in there, the pancreas, the liver, all that stuff is all in there, and you'll realize what uh, what those those are all in there. Don't don't try to memorize lists of things. Try to 
picture it and think of what things are in what what portion. Like you think of the thorax, the thoracic region. You think, oh, my lungs are here, my heart is here. Okay, you think of the region. Then think, what is this region down here? You can't see it in the in what I'm patting on in my, patting my upper upper abdomen. What's in here? Well, you have the liver and the stomach, and you have the you know spleen and the pancreas and the kidneys down a little bit below that, and then the small intestine and the large intestine comes up and around and down. So those kind of things, you start realizing that's where they are in, in your body, and, and you can realize, oh, those are in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, next slide. Uh, the peritoneal cavity um, has certain organs in it, and some parts of it stick out, and then you have things that are not in the peritoneal uh, cavity, so they're, they're in what's called the retroperitoneal space, um, or some things are subperitoneal or infraperitoneal. So you have the urinary bladder, vagina, prostate, and rectum are subperitoneal. Retroperitoneal, you have pancreas, most of it, kidneys, adrenal glands, portion of the large and small intestine are actually outside the peritoneum. Aorta, inferior vena cava, um, urinary bladder, ureters, vagina, prostate, and rectum are retroperitoneal. And vagina is also subperitoneal. Uh, the peritoneal cavity has a stomach, liver, gallbladder, spleen, tail of the pancreas, most of the small intestine, except for a small section of the duodenum, and most large intestine, the ovaries, and uterus. Okay, next slide. So, label the body cavity. So, go through and label the dorsal and ventral body cavities and thoracic, abdominal, pelvic um, cavities, and so you can do all those on your own. Uh, we'll do those in the lab. Next slide. Okay. And then look at the chart in the book, identifying the body cavity.